We've been looking at the correspondence between rotational quantities and translational quantities. Now we're going to do kinetic energy. So I'm going to put this disk into motion. And we're going to ask ourselves, what is the rotational kinetic energy? Is there a special way to calculate it for rotation? Is it going to have a new unit? Let's just see what's going to happen. So here's our disk, like this. And it's rotating around that axis, like that. And let's say it's going kind of like that's that way. And this is this way. So I can use the right-hand rule to figure out which way the angular velocity is. It's up. All right, so there's the angular velocity vector. And we could give the disk a radius r if we want and a mass m. All right, so what we're going to do to calculate the angular, uh, the uh, rotational kinetic energy, if you think about it, from what we learned before, every piece of the disk is going at a different speed. So if we go back to our translational kinetic energy, it's one half mv squared. If we break this up into little m's, they're all going at different speeds. So we kind of have to do something strange. So to get started, I'm going to pick a spot right here, and I'm going to a little marker piece of tape I labeled i. So right now, let's just think about that piece right there, i, and see what we get. So what we're going to do, so every little piece um, is moving in a circle, right? Anywhere I put that i, it moves in a circle. And they're all at the same omega, right? They're all going the same angular velocity, but they're going at various radius and speeds. If I put it farther out, it's at a high speed. If I bring it close to the center, it's at a low speed. All right, so now we're ready. So now we're going to get the kinetic energy of piece i. And we're going to use our translational way to calculate kinetic energy, because we can think of that little piece as just going in a circle at some speed v. All right, so let's see. So k, the kinetic energy uh, for piece i, well, it's 1 half the mass of piece i times the speed of piece i squared. That's just straight from translational kinematics that we've already uh, talked about. But let's see, if we want to write this in terms of omega, we know uh, that uh, the omega would be r times omega. V is r times omega, like we saw last time. So it would be 1 half the mass of piece i, and then this would be the radius of piece i, squared times omega squared. Omegas are all the same. So we just took this and replaced it with that, or that's an r. So here we have the case. Let's think about though what varies and what's the same. So the r and omega came from the v, but if we now, we would say the m i and the r i vary. Wherever you put that piece of tape, those two are different, and omega is the same everywhere you go. So if we look at this formula, then we might say, OK, now all we got to do is add up all the ki's. All right, if we want the total, if we want k rotation, we just add up sum over all the i's, the ki's, for every little piece. Sit here and move the tape around on this and that and cover it all. Let's do it theoretically. It'd be a little, a little faster. So that's going to be equal to, just sum these up, uh, let's pull the one half out. That's clearly a constant, right? And then we have the sum over all the i's. And now let's group the things that depend on i, right? So there's each one's mi, uh, its mass, and its position, its r uh, squared times omega. Okay. Well, if you look at that, then you could say, well, the half is constant, omega is constant. What is this thing? Right? What is this sum over i of all the mi ri squareds? This is a new quantity. So we started out calculating kinetic energy. And it turns out energy is the same. There's not going to be a special kind of rotational energy. It's going to be in joules. It just depends on how fast every little piece is moving. That's not the special part. It's this thing. This thing, uh, the sum i of mi ri squared equals what we call i. So i is the moment of inertia. 
And you could say it's sort of the, this is very, using language very loosely, okay? This is the rotational version of mass. So there's no special energy, but there is a special quantity that we use in the place of mass when we do rotational uh, calculations. And this is at I. And if it's a little confusing, don't worry, because we're about to do like many lectures on it. So we're about to get going. But there's what happened. We thought about energy. We ended up with some new kind of mass.